Hi everyone, uh, my name is Roger and today I'm going to talk about uh, what you should know if you program and don't use Clang but want to use Clang. Um, so this is uh, really sort of a practical explanation of the differences between it and Visual Studio and GCC. Um, I started switching over myself in 2012 uh, to use Xcode uh, and since then more and more things are supporting this so now Basically, everyone is on board. Uh, so it was uh, created in 2005 by Apple, and it was open sourced in 2007. Uh, and it's, it's, it's growing increasingly more and more common that everything except Microsoft products are using this as their like, primary compiler. So uh, get on board. Uh, it's used by, um, by iOS and has been forever, but it's also now used by Google's native client. And there's a bunch of consoles that are out there that use it as well. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of like weird, pedantic things that it does. And so that's what this talk is going to cover. Um, so here's some code. Uh, and you probably can't actually see it because it's too small. Let's make it bigger. Uh, anyhow, uh, <laughs> I made something bigger. Anyhow, uh, this code compiles on Visual Studio, uh, even though it clearly has just gobbledygook in it. And um, it's a pretty terrible thing that Visual Studio lets you do that. But the logic there is that um, if you've got some template metaprogramming code that you've written and you're not using it, then why should you bother compiling it? Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, so here's, here's the same function that would actually get run and would work on Visual Studio. Uh, the, uh, but there's, there's some interesting things that uh, won't work if you're using Clang in this code. And so when you switch over, what you'll discover is you have to be like super pedantic in the actual like terminology that you're using uh, to make it so that it will recognize and acknowledge the fact that you're using the function that you're using. So you have to like scope all of your function names and templates very explicitly in order to get them to work, uh, as well as um, you have to like use the type name parameter thingy in order to make the things happy. Um, so it's, uh, it makes the code a little bit awkward, more awkward to read, but it's more precise in the terminology that you're using. And so you should use it anyhow, right? Because it catches errors. So um, here is an example of uh, something that you might write that you would be fine with in these two particular cases. but. Uh, aren't necessarily good for the general code. So if you have uh, a function that takes a reference to an object in a, to it, and you try to do some operation with a temporary stack variable, what you will discover happens is that Visual Studio will just happily let you do that. Uh, so like if you're trying to say you've had a stream serialization and you were then deprecating some object that you had previously been loading, but you don't need it anymore, you just want to throw it away. You could do that on the stack previously in Visual Studio, but you can't do that anymore in Clang. Uh, you have to actually declare it as a local variable and then trash it. Um, and it's unfortunate, but um, the logic behind it is that you don't want to be modifying. Uh, the compiler can do optimizations to temporary variables that you can't do uh, to regular variables. And so, Clang is trying to enforce things that make the assumptions true for that. Um, and then uh, it, it just gets more and more pedantic as it goes along. There's uh, like things that read fine but are a little awkward, or uh, you know, casting data types. Uh, it will be more critical of the particular data that you use. Uh, and that is it. Uh, it's really short, uh, but. Uh, uh -huh. So, are there anyone having questions? <laughs> if you have questions, you should just come talk to Roger. And, or if you have a quick question, go for it. So, long or the short of it, it's more difficult to use, but your code will be more optimized? It's more difficult to use, but your code will be doing more of what you think it's doing. Okay. Not necessarily more optimized. Um, precise, the, I guess, is the word? More hmm? precise, I guess? Uh, it's no, it's more verbose. Uh, so uh, it's more strongly typed. That's that's a very good way of putting it. And so the result is that um, you, uh, where you could sort of get away with um, being kind of sloppy with your code before, you, the precision of Clang makes it much more clear what you're actually doing. 
Excelente.